Hi everyone, it's me, Tim. Today I want to talk about channel analytics. Now, why am I talking about this? Well, I hit 160,000 subs just a couple days ago. I'm filming this at the end of August. And a friend of mine saw me hit that and asked me about channel analytics. And I was like, I don't know what you're referring to. He said, well, if you go into your YouTube channel, you can dig around and pull up all these interesting numbers about your channel. And I'm like, oh, that's what that tab is for. I never looked at that tab. There's like a an earnings tab and an analytics tab and a copyright tab and a, um, God, there's a number of tabs that I either hardly look at or when I first started it, I opened them up and went, huh, and then closed them. By the way, some of them, there's nothing in there for a long time. You have to get a certain number of subscribers or be on the be on here for a certain length of time before there even is any data in there. So some of them used to look empty and then I stopped looking at them. So I didn't know what he was talking about. But then I've talked to other YouTubers, including one who has over a million subs, and they had asked me some questions about engagement. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And one of them said, well, you know, when you put a video up, you watch the engagement, you know, who watches and how long and where they stopped watching the most popular segment of the video. So you can determine your future videos. And I was like, I don't do that. I would say about half my content on this channel now directly comes from questions that you are all asking or that I think of because I made a video and there was a lot of discussion in the comment section. I'm like, I should make a video and clarify that, or I should make a video and extend this. So that's where most of my videos come from, not from me looking at, oh, well, this video was super popular and had a lot of engagement in minute three. I should look at minute three and make a video about that. I've, I've actually never done that. It also reminded me of when one of the commenters on this channel said, hey, can you turn on super thanks? And I'm like, I can. What are you talking about? And it was some, you had to go to earning and some tab under that tab was about turning on super thanks. And then that's when it opened up the whole discussion about memberships and all that. And these are just things I hadn't thought about and weren't like on my roadmap for this channel, which was basically to explain game development people to people and how the industry works. And then hopefully people will make a bunch of games that Uncle Tim wants to play. That was my entire goal with this channel. So I dove into the analytics section and here's what I pulled out. So my first video went up April 27th, 2023. These are all the uh, data under the analytics section as of last week of August, 2024. I'd give you a day, but it was, I did it over a few days and picked up all this data. And one of them, uh, if you try to get more than 90 days worth of data, it either wouldn't give it to you or it took a long time. Like I'm talking 15, 20 minutes for that um, data to populate. So I spread this work out over a few days. So let's talk about demographics. The age of people watching this channel, the by far the highest category was people between 25 and 34. That was 45% of the channel, so almost half. And then the next four, so the top five, was 35 to 44, 18 to 24, and 45 to 54. Oh, followed by 65 and older was the fifth category. And I was like, wait a minute. The lowest category was me, people age 55 to 64. And I'm like, wow, I'm not even reaching me. Also, uh, really tiny was 17 and under, but I mark all my videos as not for kids, so you should not be watching this channel if you're 17 and under. I'm like, I saw that, I saw a non-zero percentage there and went, hey, uh, for gender, the channel is overwhelmingly male, it's 93%. Although the remaining 7% is an all-female, a lot of people wouldn't fill out that uh, or chose not to select a gender. Where uh, the viewers are coming from was interesting to me. The U.S. was the biggest country, the number one, at 45%. However, the next four countries were the U.K., Canada, Australia, and Germany, which I just thought was interesting. But then when I switched from country to city... 
my top city isn't even in the US, which I thought was super interesting. It became the top city is London, followed by New York, Los Angeles, Melbourne, and Sydney. And I'm like, whoa, hey, Australian peeps. I thought that was pretty cool. I didn't realize there were so many viewers in Australia because I have talked about, I've been there for a, a few times, went there for a couple game conferences, love the industry down there. It's got this really 90s vibe that appeals to me. But anyway, the other interesting thing under demographics was 90% of the people watching this channel don't turn on subtitles, which surprised me because I always keep subtitles on on YouTube and actually in all my streaming services, not because I'm hard of hearing, but because I find it, first of all, if I'm watching any show that has accents, and I'm talking regional accents in the US, um, like British shows, and also there's a lot of TVs and show movies that I think people mumble. There's even, I've read online there's a whole thing about how sound has become very different in shows now. People mumble, people look away from the camera and go, and I'm like, what was that? So I just watched with subtitles. I was surprised that majority of people here don't. So I moved over to the view section of the demographics and I found out I've now hit 10.5 million views, evenly divided between people who are subscribed to the channel, 51%, and people who aren't, 49%. Um, most of the views come from subscribers or people who were browsing YouTube or my video was suggested to them in the suggested video section. Most people watch on their computer, 49%. But mobile was a really close second at 41%. TV and tablets made up the remainder of that, which is the, they fought over, I guess, the last 10%. And it's roughly e equal. Then I went into my playlist, and if in case you didn't know, this entire channel was every video that goes up is broken down into one of my playlists. So I was curious which play, playlists were watched the most. It shouldn't have surprised me that number one was Fallout. 32% of the views of videos on this channel are people watching Fallout videos. But number two was system design, followed by general game development, which is where I put things when I don't know what category to put them, followed by narrative design, which is really interesting because as I've said repeatedly, I don't consider myself a narrative designer, but I do frequently find myself in charge of narrative designers. So, and I apparently have had enough interesting things to say about narrative design, pro or whether people agree or not, that that is my uh, fourth most watched playlist. And then the fifth one is programming. Despite the fact that I'm a trained programmer and I've talked about programming. And I think it's because I don't dive into things like, I'm not gonna turn this into a, here's a channel about teaching C++ or C Sharp. Interesting, interestingly to me, almost tied with programming, but coming in at a very close number six was the Arcanum playlist. There's a lot of you out there who like Arcanum, which just, I realize Fallout's 27 years old and now Arcanum is 23 years old but it just warms this old game developer's heart that people like watching videos about those old games. Um, then I jumped into the sub uh, tab, which is the last one I really glanced through of, actually, no, I went, I went to one more after that. I, like I mentioned, we just hit a couple days ago, this is the end of August of 2024, 160,000 subscribers. Um, there's also over 160 members of the channel. What's interesting to me is Half of those are mutant, which is the, the first tier, but almost almost all of the remaining half is master, the top tier. Very few people pick super mutant. It's like they either pick the low tier and it's kind of like, hey, you know, I want a priority comment and I want to I want to support the channel. And then they jump right up to master and saying, I want to really support the channel and I want to, I went, if I ask you a question, I want to see my video right away. Because currently, I think this video is coming out in October, maybe mid-October, which should give you an idea of the buffer I've got. It's My buffer varies between six and eight weeks of videos that I've already got ready to go out. You guys ask a lot of questions. The last tab I looked at were favorite videos. I was curious what people watch the most. So I grabbed the most watched top five of the entire year and a half this video this channel's existed, which took a long time to populate. All of these had at least 
250,000 views, except the fifth one, which was really, really close. So I slid it in. I'm just saying, look, it's close enough to 250. Anyway, my top video, surprisingly enough, was why I left Fallout 2. That has over 400,000 views as of August 2024. Followed by me talking about going to the Fallout TV show, which has 350,000 views, which doesn't surprise me because a lot of external websites picked that up. Followed by my video on game development caution, which now has over 300,000 views. Again, it not only got picked up by websites, but there were a lot of reaction videos made to it. So I'm not surprised people clicked through and wanted to see what I actually said rather than what somebody was saying I said in a reaction. That was followed by number four, which was my Fallout TV show review, which has 260,000 views, which was made because so many people who watched my Fallout TV show video were like, oh, you're not reviewing it? And I'm finally like, okay, I'll, I'll, talk, I'll tell you what I thought of it. Spoiler, I liked it. And then my fifth most popular, most watched video is The True Purpose of the Vaults in Fallout, which came in currently at just over 236,000 views. I thought that was cool. By the way, number six, and I don't remember what, I didn't write down what it was, drops into like the 150,000 range. So there's a big gap. I mean, the, the top five are a clear top five. Now, interestingly enough, I am incapable of searching for the most commented video or the most liked video. There's absolutely no way for me to do that. And I've got like over 400 videos now. So I didn't go through and do it by hand. I just think it's weird that it doesn't let me do that. I can see why it may not let you do that, but why is it restricting that information from me? I thought about scraping everything and putting it in an Excel spreadsheet and doing it automatically, but I didn't feel like writing that code. Besides all this other stuff that I just told you, I could just do. So I don't know why that was restricted. Anyway, that's my channel in a bunch of numbers. That's my channel analytics as of end of August, 2024. I hope you found that interesting. I did.